good afternoon. There is something they say is a constant in all our lives. No, I don't mean change. I feel growth is the only constant. We adults tend to grow horizontally. You youngsters tend to grow vertically. However, every day of our lives, we all grow, either physically, mentally, or spiritually. This journey that we take requires a lot of courage, requires a lot of guts, and above all, requires some tools which I like to call as hacks, like you youngsters like to call these days. In life, we are faced with a whole deal of opportunities which enable us to take the path that is not been taken before, which is the theme of the day. And I've chosen the topic, growth hacking, for that very specific reason. When we set out on our life journeys, we are essentially trying to dare to go to where no one has gone before. And this equation has served me very well. In the quest to grow, you are always trying to find the new path. You are always trying to connect those unseen dots. And above all, you are trying to create for yourself a journey that will be unique to you, yet everyone around you gets inspired. In this, I have always looked at this quote right behind me as something that inspires me. If I was to look at every moment, including this very moment that I'm choosing to stand in front of all of you, as an opportunity for me to elevate myself, it's but obvious that when I put my step out here, I put the best possible step that I can. And that is, in a sense, what growth hacking is all about. This is a concept which is essentially been coined very recently, as recently as about 2009 or 10. However, this has been in existence right from the time of the Mahatma or even before. And we see the example of what this growth hacking means in everyday life. Do you all recognize these brand logos here? Most of these are logos that we are very, very familiar with. However, let me talk about a couple of them. The McDonald's logo which you see up there essentially was an opportunity where Ray Kroc connected a few dots. What, was, what were those dots that he tried to connect? He said, I have the recipe for something that is cheap to make, quick to serve, and essentially is something that is meant for people on the go. And where will I find it? The answer to his question was, on the interstates of the United States. Hey presto, you suddenly saw the golden arches popping up across the United States on the interstates. And it serves all the three purposes that he set out to achieve. And that was a hack that he pursued. And look at where the brand is today. That was in 1950. The brand which is right at the bottom there is a brand which evolved out of two people's desperate need to get some money for the next meal. Literally so. Two young Rhode Island School of Design pass out. One ejected from a job, the other without a job. In a room, not knowing what to do. And they happen to see a newspaper which has an ad which says there is an exhibition happening in the city. And what do they do? They contact another friend of theirs to write a small program, put it out on Craigslist saying, we have three air beds and we are willing to serve you breakfast. All it's going to cost you is $80. With that, they found three people, an Indian man, a young advertising executive, and a father of two who had been thrown out of his home. All three of them came and slept on their air mattress and were served omelets and ham the next morning. And out of that was born Airbnb, which happens to be one of the largest real estate companies in terms of hotel spaces today, without owning a single physical structure. This was a hack that they pursued, and today it's a billion dollar company. 
Now, if these are hacks that people have chased, how does it relate to any of us in this room and why am I talking about it? This is an example that I have never tired of quoting. The person behind me is someone that you may not know. This is a man who used to supply vegetables to my house. This is a man who was a 10th class dropout, ran away from home because there was no food to eat, came to Mumbai, started out doing odd jobs, figured out that there is something that Mumbaikers like and he can deliver, which was dosa. He decided that he is going to invest all that he earns, which was 1,200 rupees, and start a small business. And this man started his business in front of my eyes. I have seen him grow. He started a small business at the back of a bicycle, slowly graduated to a push cart, which got taken away by the police, eventually managed to cobble up enough, mo enough money to rent a small shop and start a dosa business. This man today holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the maximum number of dosas that any restaurant can serve. And today, his is a business which is about 300 crores worth in India. Now, why am I talking about all these examples and how does it relate to each and every one of you in this room? And when I say each and every one, I genuinely mean each and every one in this room. It relates simply because we all are in this journey of growing. Whether it is financial growth, whether it is intellectual growth, whether it is educational growth, whatever be it, we are on this journey to try and become somebody better than what we were yesterday, the last hour, the last minute. And in this, these hacks genuinely help. Whether you are a student, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a professional, whoever you are, at the end of the day, you want and seek to take that next step, open that closed door and take a path which was not taken before. And to do that, in my mind, there are these five steps or five hacks that one needs to look at. First and foremost, you've got to be proud of yourself. And when I say proud of yourself, your journey thus far is of immense value. When you look back and dig deep inside yourself, find those moments of pride. Find those elements which made you what you are. Your successes, your failures, your attempts, all of that, the summation of that is who you are. And that's what has brought you thus far. Which means you have the potential to go way further. Take that leap, go on that path. The next one is each and every one of us has to stand for something. You cannot be the potato in the biryani. You've got to be something which is unique, which is you. And how do you find that? That is only by trial and error. If I chose to be here today, that's because I'm on this journey to become becoming a professional speaker. And maybe one day I will achieve it, maybe I will not. But I'm going to stand for the fact that I want to put myself out there and try to become a professional speaker. What is your uniqueness? What is your USP? And that's a question that you can answer very easily at one time in the day. In the morning when you're brushing your teeth. When you look at yourself in the mirror, look at who you are and answer the question, what do I stand for? If you get the answer, great. If you don't, keep brushing your teeth a little more. <laughs> the third one is die head first. When you choose to do something, do it Fully. When you choose to swim, you cannot put your pinky toe into the water and say, I swam. You've got to get into the pool. And the best way to get into the pool, jump in head first. If you give yourself 100% to anything that you do, whether you succeed or whether you fail, you're going to come up with a whole bunch of learning which you can use elsewhere in life. Therefore, jumping head first is something that you've got to practice. Because if that's not done, all else you just meet it because then you're not committed to what you're thinking. The next one is be a blank slate, be a sponge, be whatever that you can be. I sometime back said do not be a potato, in this case I will say be a potato. Because why? The potato absorbs all the flavors 
and becomes richer for it. Exactly the same way, we all have the opportunity, today especially, the world around us is surrounded by so much of information. If we are just going to be good receptors, it will enhance us. Because I would like to share an example of this. I remember when I was dating my now wife, then girlfriend, and I didn't have money to buy a Valentine's card. I happened to confide in a friend of mine. The guy just listened. He kept listening. He listened for another 10 minutes and I said, Rajesh, are you going to tell me something? And he says, Suits, chill. I'll take care of it. The next morning, I get a handmade card which had all the chocolates which were not available in India at that time. On top of it was, I will cross and a Milky Way bar. If you are on Mars, I will be the gem, etc., etc. Out of that discussion was born a business which fetched for him a good 5,000 rupees at the age of 17, which when I was growing up was a lot of money. And that is what happens when you are a blank slate. When you just listen, absorb, assimilate and then try to do something with it, you can actually make things happen. Last but not least, this is the most critical. According to me, if the other four are lacking a little bit, it's okay. But if the fifth one is lacking, everything else fails. You've got to be positive. At every step, at every stage, if you're a growth hacker, failure has got to be your friend. Success has to be just another step on the way. Neither of these two can ever sway the balance in such a way that you either completely fall or your success goes to your head and you do not know what to do. This is the most critical. Accept everything around you. Take everything that comes with the spirit that it is happening for a reason. And once you do that, it is but natural for you to look at how this situation, how this person, how the circumstance can benefit you. And that is the biggest of all growth hacks. Because if you choose to look at life from that prism where you look at everything as something of a learning experience, it automatically changes your perspective and your paradigm. And that in turn results in growth. So all in all, if you got to build your tent of success, these five pillars needs to be strong. Of these five, you can choose to make one of them the tallest, doesn't matter. But these five need to be there. And once those five pillars are firmly in the ground, success is but just an outcome. However, as they say, success or failure is a part of the journey. It is a journey that's the most important. So as I leave the stage, I would like you to look at this quote. If you start by doing what is necessary, you automatically look at what is possible. And hey presto, one of these days, you're going to be making the impossible possible. Thank you.